Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Azusa Reform Presbyterian Church as we come together for our Tuesday morning a time of devotion. And as we gather together today to hear once more from the words of Charles Spurgeon, our hearts are drawn to thanksgiving, to joy, and to a reminder of how blessed we are to be sons and daughters of the living God. So let's go to these words from Psalm 111.9. And let us do so in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, you have guided us into another day in your kingdom. You have shown forth the brightness of your glory in this cool November day. And as we think about all the things that we have on our plate today, what remains of this week, God, we ask that in every way you would strengthen our hearts, that you would encourage us, and that you would remind us that no matter how dark the horizon might seem, the light of gospel truth will show us the way forward. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So this morning we turn again to Psalm 111.9. He has commanded his covenant forever. The Lord's people delight in the covenant itself. It is an unfailing source of comfort not only to them, but to their posterity. And it is through the leading of the Holy Spirit into the banqueting house that we see the waving of this banner of love. Believers delight to contemplate the antiquity of the covenant, remembering that before the day star knew its place, or planets ran their course. The interests of the saints were in the very mind of God, and they were made secure in Jesus Christ. It is peculiarly pleasing to them to remember the certainty of the covenant while meditating upon God's steadfast, sure love. Not only for David, but for his covenant people. Now, as we see this, we're also moved to delight in the signing, in the sealing, and the deliverance of this covenantal blessing. Our hearts are often overwhelmed with joy to think of its immutability as a covenant that neither time nor eternity, life nor death, will ever be able to break. A covenant as old as eternity and as everlasting as the rock of ages. We rejoice as we dine upon the fullness of the covenant, of the meat which fills our hearts. For this covenant, which is as old as eternity and everlasting as the rock of ages, is a reminder of the fullness of this covenant. For in it we see all the things that God provides for us. For God is our portion. Christ is our companion. The Spirit, our comforter. The earth, the place where we see the covenant work itself out. For heaven shall be our home. We see in it an inheritance that is reserved for every soul possessing an interest in its ancient and eternal gift. Our eyes sparkle when we see it as a treasure trove throughout the pages of the Bible. And our souls are gladdened when we see in the last will and testament of Christ how it was bequeathed to us. More especially, it is the will and pleasure of God's people to contemplate the graciousness of the covenant. We see it in the way that the law in its power to condemn was made void because the covenant of works was fulfilled. For it depends upon the merit of Christ and that merit is given unto us by faith. 
We know that these things endure because grace is the basis. Grace the condition. Grace the bulwark. Grace the foundation. Grace the capstone. The covenant is a treasury of wealth, a granary of food, a fountain of life, a storehouse of salvation, a charter of peace, and a haven of joy. You know, one of the blessings, of course, of being reminded of covenant is thinking again about the fact that that covenant is signed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And saying that this is the case, we can rest assured that that covenant will never be broken, that our hope in the gospel will never be taken away from us. And so what are we to do in light of this precious gift? We are to rejoice. We are to worship. We are to give thanks. And most of all, we are to seek out other believers to rejoice in this good news with. And less providentially hindered by actual providence. We should be in the presence of God's people on the Lord's day. For there's nothing more important in our lives than that moment where we dwell in the presence of God. And we get to do that with our brothers and sisters in Christ. For it's a foretaste of glory divine, a foretaste of the heavens to come where we will receive the reward purchased by our Savior and find our peace and our comfort forever, for eternity, in this covenant promise, which has been made for us by Jesus Christ. Take care and God bless.